Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it is uh, afternoon where I'm at. Wherever else in the world you are, I don't know. But I salute you, and peace be with you. I want to read 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to start verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. The following verse. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Now here's here's where we end up with a problem. Because uh, what do we end up doing with traditions of men? And then we listen to people slightly change the verse of the Bible right there in the pulpit. So we go to churches, obviously not right now, and we listen to that man who was only a man, and we don't open up our Bible and fact check. And even, even in some churches, you can't even fact check because I'll tell you why. And I've said this before. When you walk into a church and you have an NIV, he has a... Let me change that because I don't have... Because I have a K, King James. I have a King James. You have an NIV. He has an ESV. He has the good message. Uh, not the good message. I'm sorry. The message Bible. He has a living... Translation. So, you know, you have these different versions. Now, thankfully, I have these versions in my home. And you say, thankfully? Yes, thankfully. Because I came across someone one time who said, why don't you cross-reference these certain scriptures? And then I went on to look at other ones. And the meanings change. It was never about changing a word for to a better understanding. When you change certain words, you, you change the context. You change the whole sentence. You know, and, and I'll take a very profane word now. If you tell someone, I like being gay, what does that mean? Well, it used to mean something different. To be gay and marry. To be happy. So when you change certain words... You change the context and you change the definitions of what they are. So slowly over the years, we've done that to get conditioned to different words. Again, recondition to yourself back to what the word really originally meant. So you can't take it out of context. So these Bible translations, I'm not going to get into a big one. Plenty of people have done studies, very valid studies. I mean, I'm sorry, it's pretty obvious. If... I don't mean to be rude, but it's very, very obvious. If you actually take the time and, and don't listen to your, any pastor tells you, ah, oh, they're all the same. They're not all the same. They're not all the same. If you want to follow the NIV instead of the King James, that's up to you. You want to follow the ESV or the Message Bible or the Living Translation or the New Jerusalem Bible or the NASB. Uh, what else? We got the uh, NKJV. Oh, that's an interesting one. You know, you have all these different versions. There are many scriptures that are exactly the same, but then there are some that sneak in. The devil is not going to come and just go, I'm going to change you. No, 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 no. The devil slowly infiltrates areas, slowly messes with your mind to change you. So you err from your way. And you don't even know that you're erring from your way. It seems okay. That seems like a pretty uh, sentence. And that seems like a pretty scripture. Well, that seems like a pretty movie. All these slow, slow turns. It's a gradual change. The next thing you know, you're not where you're supposed to be. No, not in the church building. You're not where you're supposed to be. In the true word of God. Look at the translations. But that's plenty of people much greater than me. Much more spiritual. Looking for that right word. Men who have really done the study on these. Who have been moved by the Holy Spirit. They know. They've, they've deciphered it. 
I'm me. I'm just a simple guy. I'm just, I'm just a guy in a truck in Connecticut. You know, what, what do you want from me? You know. But pay attention. Pay attention. Don't fall for all these things. These, you know, all these up in here and there. No, stop, stop. I promise you, the longer you stay in the Bible, all oh, the better you're going to be. The better you're going to be. So don't believe the old wives' tales and traditions. Fables and traditions, don't fall for them. Some will say, boy, the Bible's a fable and a tradition. Okay. You find me true, true Bible believers who follow this. And you tell me the fruit. Because that's how you can tell. You can tell me that my Bible doesn't work all day long. But go find the fruit of that. Is that person living a good life? When I mean good life, I don't mean a Joel Olstein good life now, and a Rick Warren, find your purpose, or whatever book he wrote, or whatever nonsense this guy's on. All these guys are, and, and gals are just tickling the ears. They're just tickling the ears. They don't want to really dive deep. They want to, they'll throw you a couple of things here and there. But you can do this. You can overcome all these things. No, you can't. Without God, you cannot overcome all these things. It's not going to happen. I appreciate you watch my video as always. And as always, God bless, I love you, and have a fantastic day.